burning again. Three people died today, including a nine-year-old boy as police and paramilitary clashed with protesters who have been protesting for the last weeks against alleged killings by security forces. The JNK government itself hit out at the CRPF today, giving the unfortunate impression that there could be a dangerous drift in Kashmir. Is the Omar Abdullah government losing control? Mufti Islam, Mithu Jain, report. <laughs> No let up in the street rage at Srinagar and Sopor. Sopor under curfew for the third straight day. A nine year old boy and another civilian killed today in CRPF and police action against protesters. In the last fortnight, eight civilians killed. An embarrassed and worried state government is pointing fingers at the CRPF. This was totally unwarranted. This was firing karna. इसे एडिंग टू द फ्यूल हिंदुस्तान के होम मिनिस्टर से गुजारिश करूंगा एक तो वो फूरी तो इनको जरा लगाम दे दें जिस तरह ये फील्ड में काम कर रहे हैं और खुद वो यहां आ जाए बट द सीआरपीएफ सेज दे हैव टू डील विद हंड्रेड्स ऑफ स्टोन पेल्टिंग प्रोटेस्टर्स एंड हैव द राइट टू डिफेंड देमसेल्व्स फायर केम फ्रॉम द मॉब ऑन द व्हीकल ऑफ मिस्टर अल्ताफ हु इज द एसपी ऑफ सोपोर सीआरपी इज देयर टू असिस्ट the state police caught in the crossfire between protesters and the opposition is the young chief minister of the state omar abdullah with no one listening to him he is looking to delhi for help the sense in delhi is that the separatists are fueling the situation by riding the emotions on the streets the opposition is only happy to tear into omar it seems that the government has totally it's totally clueless it has lost its plot they should utilize the services of local police officers we have about 3000 gazetted officers that's sitting in the line in the offices the jammu and kashmir government rocked by series of civilian deaths is not only embarrassed and clueless but it's finding itself powerless too it's now looking for new delhi for answers will the union home ministry intervene and come to the rescue of country's youngest chief minister in srinagar mufti isla Speaking a short while back to India at 9, Home Secretary G.K. Pillay said that the separatists are instigating the protesters and the CRPF personnel simply fired in self-defense. I think uh, this is all uh, in one sense been whipped up by the separatist elements uh, to create uh, confusion uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. The CRPF have been deployed there to help the state government. Uh, they are... Uh, been deployed at the specific locations earmarked by the state police and wherever they have reacted they have reacted when they have been attacked is the omar abdullah government in jammu and kashmir hurtling from crisis to crisis when omar abdullah took over as chief minister of jnk in january 2009 he was seen as kashmir's big hope but has he now become kashmir's big disappointment over the last 18 months his government has come in for a great deal of criticism it has made no headway in engaging the separatists in dialogue there has been no headway towards the autonomy demand his government has failed to get the armed forces special powers act repealed omar has been accused of failing to prevent human rights violations by security forces since january 2010 seven young men have allegedly died at the hands of security forces in srinagar city alone the may 2010 machil fake encounter in which the army allegedly killed three villagers and dubbed them militants has added to popular anger stone pelting protests a kind of kashmir intifada have become routine and the government has been unable to handle law and order omar's government has been accused of mishandling and covering up the shopia incident omar abdullah has also been unable to handle pressure and was accused of enacting a resignation drama when his name cropped up in that sex scandal case last year analysts say that omar has also failed to bridge the jammu kashmir divide and the fight between gujaras and paharis has worsened so the um, umar abdullah government the present 
firing, the clashes. What does this mean for Jammu and Kashmir? Joining us, Mehboob Beg, senior leader and MP of the National Conference, is joining us. Sajad Loan, chairman of the Jammu and Kashmir People's Conference. Sajad Loan, the first separatist leader who actually fought in the Lok Sabha polls last year. Manish Tiwari, MP and spokesperson of the Congress, and right in our studio, Praveen Swami, associate editor of the Hindu. Gentlemen, thanks very much indeed. The question we're asking is Omar Abdullah's honeymoon with Kashmir over. What are you telling us there at the start of the show? 78% yes. Let's get into crossfire. Mr. Mehbu Beg, you know, when your government itself publicly says that the CRPF is targeting civilians and publicly takes on the CRPF, what kind of message does this send to the people? Doesn't it send a message that the government is completely out of control? No, uh, the question is, uh, when you have a law and order situation, uh, CRP is posed uh, here in Kashmir because of abnormal circumstances which we are going which we are going through for the last over two decades now uh, they are supposed to handle the situation and uh, chief minister being the chairman of the unified command chief minister has passed very clear cut directions that uh, no human rights violations will be tolerated and while handling the situation no collateral damage will be uh, tolerated that's exactly what we are saying when we say this but doesn't this give the impression that the chief minister uh, really, you know, is 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 not is not being responsible enough? We saw the same thing when that resignation drama was enacted last year, when he offered to resign, and there was this, you know, there was this kind of drama. And again, Omar Abdullah, you know, frontally targeting the CRP. It seems as though the chief minister needs to be a little more, perhaps a little more grave, a little more mature. Perhaps I, I think the resignation drama is a thing apart. The allegations made were not only unfounded but of an extraordinarily personal character. And frankly, if I had a family and kids, um, I, I would not want to be part of it. should be targeting the CRP like this in public? The CRP thing, I have to say, I fail to understand. The CRP operates under the command of the Jammu and Kashmir government. It operates with the Jammu and Kashmir police. Mm -hmm. If the Jammu and Kashmir government believes that officers in the CRPF are not doing what they would like them to be doing, it's open to them to have them removed and to discuss that with the Home Minister and to get that done. Right. Uh, there are also questions I think the state government needs to be answering. Two of the recent incidents haven't involved the CRPF at all. Mm -hmm. They've involved the Jammu and Kashmir police. Right. Um, not all these incidents have been violations of human rights. There may have been a couple of cases where the force used is quite clearly uh, disproportionate. Mm -hmm. But there have been some like today where people were, where CRPF personnel were about to be lynched. And I so think saying this is people, it was the only way to maintain law and order? You know, if I was in a bunker and somebody was within very short distance of causing me serious physical harm, I mean, CRPF mm -hmm. people were badly injured today, I had a gun in my hand, I would probably use it. Okay, what role then, Mr. Sajad Lone, are parties like you playing? What role are you playing? I mean, is, is, it, is it not the responsibility, given the fact that the situation in Kashmir could dangerously drift so very quickly, is it the responsibility of people like you to send out the message of calm, to send out a message of peace? Because we know the stakes are too high, very high. Democracy is fragile. You need to really perhaps be much more responsible and not incite... Um, young men to violence as people are saying that pe people like you are doing, uh, leaders like you are doing? No, I don't think it would be people like me, but uh, to be very honest, I have no love lost for Omar Abdullah. I lost an election to his party. But uh, this is beyond Omar Abdullah. Uh, you have to look at the structural problems. You're using a completely operational approach for the last 20 years at a very high human cost. And it's time that the Indian state revisited the whole problem and tried to look at it from the, in the context of uh, the conflict that has been here for the last 20 years. For example, Mr. Praveen Swami just now talked about kids and how he would have reacted in the same manner uh, about the sex scandal accusation. Now, similarly, when a Kashmiri parent gets a dead body in the evening of his son, you should understand the anger that he has. Sagarika, I, one of the reasons I came on the program today is to tell channels like you and people like Mr. Parveen Swami that it's time to reflect reality in Kashmir as it exists. You see, the people of India, I, I think we're doing their great disservice to them. If we uh, do not reflect reality as it exists and they end up condoning something which probably they would never do if they knew what the reality was. So it's beyond Omar Abdullah. I think it's time that you look at 
long term fees and not short term management of fees which i am afraid is being done through fortified bunkers the biggest question is what's the bunker doing there you know you need to remove the bunker and not discuss about what somebody would do okay, if so he gets close to putting, the putting the putting the owner squarely on the indian state and said it's nothing to do with the politicians it's nothing to do with the mood in the valley in fact this is a very popular it's a very genuine public protest it's the indian state which has actually caused this uh, this situation i don't disagree with sajad loan that there needs to be a political process in jammu and kashmir um i think there are limits to what delhi but can do but are the politicians playing politics over this politicians will play politics that goes for anyone who's in politics including omar abdullah including uh, mr loan including manmohan singh and anyone else it's unreasonable to expect them to do otherwise uh, my point is only this of course there's a political problem that needs to be addressed the reason it's not getting addressed is because everyone doesn't agree on what needs to be done there are real problems a lot of smart people have tried to set about solving this and they don't agree it will take time maybe one day we will have a solution we can all live with in the meanwhile young people are getting killed there is undoubtedly anger in the valley but these violent clashes are happening not across the valley but in three cities and in certain parts of those cities there are a whole load of explanations for what might be happening but maybe we all need to apply our minds and look for a constructive solution i don't actually think sajad loan has been inflammatory i think the, uh, every kashmiri leader has called for peace these young people aren't listening to anyone and maybe that's something people should be talking about and trying to but work out a solution but should the message to. go out much more strongly manish tiwari uh, what is your what is your take on this uh, on this uh, your ally omar abdullah is being seen as hurtling from crisis to crisis he's not being seen to be uh, in control of the situation how far are the politicians to blame actually and your government to blame for the situation being where it is Well, Sagarika. First of all, uh, I don't think uh, that Mr. Omar Abdullah or his government is not under in control. The government definitely is in control. If you look at Kashmir uh, in a 21-year perspective, it's gone through the troughs and lows of violence. You know, there have been very, very agitated street protests, which have been followed by democratic elections in which people have come out and participated and reaffirmed their faith in the Indian state. So therefore, it is a complex uh, situation. I do not think there are any easy answers. No, but the problem it. is not. Let's, 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 let's not seek refuge. No, 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 let's not seek minister. refuge in platitudes no, here, Manish Tiwari. I mean, the point uh, is, the Omar Sagar Abdullah is government is going from crisis to crisis. We are seeing Shopia. We are seeing street protests. We are seeing resignation drama. We are seeing uh, violence on a regular basis. What is going on? Why is it that Omar Abdullah, who is this great hope of Kashmir? mir is simply not being able to deliver a government that his people are appreciating or responding to why isn't he coming across as a real people's chief minister sagrika i think uh, you know uh, somebody of your standing can obviously contextualize the whole thing it is not only omar abdullah you know who is handling a difficult situation but if you look at every chief minister from 1996 onwards whether it was dr farooq abdullah whether it was mufti mohammad said whether it was gulam nabi azad or it is dr omar abdullah all of them have similarly handled very virulent street protests you know so therefore while on one hand but we get you know, the feeling uh, that he's on the back we foot understand, we you understand know, we get the feeling we he's on the back foot as if as if the, his opponents are dictating the agenda and he's just in the reactive mode. Mode. Let's get a word in from Mehboob Beg. Mehboob Beg, what's what? What does it look like to you? It looks as if your government is completely out of control. No, I don't see government is out of control. Question is, uh, you will have to see when the Prime Minister came here along with the UPA chairperson when they had to flag off uh, a railway uh, thing in uh, Kazigund. Uh, Chief Minister made it very clear to them. He said. Uh, that uh, economic packages are all right employment packages are all right but it is the political alienation which has to be addressed unless and until you do that and do that seriously unfortunately these things uh, will happen why why is omar abdullah government not being able to address political alienation this is the odd thing because if you ask national conference politicians they'll say oh delhi needs to do more and if you speak to people in delhi they'll say there's a state government there do what it needs to do and i think both those answers are right um i think firstly with this larger question of political alienation we all have to understand that this is a complex process it's not going to go poof there is no magic key speak to national people conference people they'll say give us autonomy the problem will disappear speak to the pdp you may hear a different story speak to sajad loan you'll hear another story altogether 
Um, the truth is that these young people represent a new generation of urban inner city politics and aspirations, which is something very different. You're not getting these stone these stone throwing incidents in Kazi Kunda it's somewhere like in North Kashmir. It's like a new form of protest, almost a new it's form like, of protest, like which, Kashmir, like which is coming, which is coming out of very particular areas with mm -hmm. very special histories. It's certainly been capitalized on by the National Conference's opponents. And I, if if I was a uh, National Conference member. I'd be asking myself some hard questions, notably about whether in these particular areas I was doing what needed to be done and whether my police, uh, cutting edge police leadership, in fact, right. consisted of the best possible people. Mm -hmm. It's sad to me that, uh, Sagrika, you've hosted so many of these debates over these years. You always get this long set of complaints about Delhi doesn't do this or Srinagar isn't doing that. I've yet to hear politicians come out with a serious constructive agenda. These street protests, Manish Tiwari right. is spot on. They're not new. We've had far bigger ones, more lethal ones since 08. What are you going to do about it? They're You're the government, new. you tell us. That, and that's an important point. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about Omar Abdullah and talk about why perhaps he's not being yet able to emerge as a kind of hands-on, committed people's chief minister, which Kashmir perhaps needs. Kashmir does not just need development, as we've said many times. It needs development. Plus, is Omar Abdullah being able to provide that plus? Much more on Face the Nation when we come back. And I am an Indian, and I see no distinction between the two. Sir, the enemies of Indian Muslims are not the Americans. The enemies of the Indian Muslims are not deals like this. The enemies of Indian Muslims are the same enemies that all the poor people of India face. Poverty, hunger, unemployment, lack of development, and the absence of a voice. It is that that we are against. That was Omar Abdullah at his most passionate during that no conference motion in 2008 where he said, I am a Muslim and an Indian. But is that passion now lacking as his tenure as chief minister? Carry on voting on the question of the day that we're asking you. Is Omar's honeymoon with JNK coming to an end? And we'll carry on with our discussion. Before we get back into Omar, I want to just digress a little bit and talk about the CRP. I mean, what is happening to the CRPF in Jammu and Kashmir? Is it, is it losing control? Uh, what, what's going on? The CRP is a force in crisis. You've seen the terrible things that have happened to it in Chhattisgarh. It's the most overworked, undertrained, tired force in this country. Mm -hmm. When these men finish their tenures in Jammu and Kashmir, they're not going to get two years at a peace station. They'll go to Manipur or they'll go to Dantewada or somewhere else. Horrible. In Jammu and Kashmir, you expect the same force to do to fight terrorists in difficult terrain to do crowd protection But why doesn't do the Jammu and Kashmir government use the JNK police? Why the Jammu and Kashmir police CRP? is again, given what it needs to do, overstretched. Largely, it's been raised as a counter-terrorism force. It lacks the skills to do crowd control effectively. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem that's been besetting Indian police forces across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, they'd sent people over here to study Indian crowd control techniques because right. we had a tradition of doing this well. Uh, regrettably, that's declined. And this is something police administrators, chief ministers, and the union home ministry So, and in this situation, right. you're saying that, the, uh, I mean, that you're saying like the home secretary, that the CRP had no option. In if they hadn't acted, they would have been lynched. What, what we've seen on video today certainly indicates that. There are a couple of earlier incidents which you could make very different arguments on. The videos haven't been made public. I'd like to see them. Um, but I don't think these are people who are looking to kill. I think these are people who are overworked stretched, under And acting under self-defense. Sajad Lone, respond to that. The CRP at the end of the day is only acting because the mob was attacking it and if it hadn't acted, they would have been lynched and uh, there would have been large-scale damage to public property and public and, and, and life. I don't think so. I honestly feel that uh, whenever the security forces have acted in Kashmir, uh, there has been a lot of overreaction. And... Um, I honestly don't believe that they're better at crowd control. Uh, you know, this is, uh, there is something called cultural legacy and uh, the JNK police uh, could have done a much better job. But I don't want to get into who does a better job in, uh, in c controlling the crowds. But uh, I would just say, Sagarika, that uh, for the sake of those who have died, let us stop 
endorsing what they have done. I think that way you would do the people of India a great favor because I don't think it's nice trying to endorse something you are not here. I do agree that there are some elements who are rowdy, who are lumpen elements, who try to ignite situations. I don't deny that. But still, for the sake of that nine-year-old who has died today, let's stop endorsing the actions of people who have opened fire on uh, actually non-combatants. But you're absolutely right there. But Sajad Lone, what about then? Let's come back to Omar Abdullah, who is the subject of our discussion. Why is there then so much anger? You're saying there's anger. Why is there anger? You see, I told you earlier also that uh, Umar Abdullah was never the expectation that unfortunately you made him out to be. You means the national media, which was obsessed with him, and neither he is the disappointment that you want, now want to make him out to be. He is basically smaller than the situation, and every mainstream politician, whether it's Mufti Saab, Azad Saab, or Umar Saab, is smaller than the political situation in JNK. And in some, at some time, at some point in their careers, they're going to face these situations. And I don't agree that uh, Delhi needs to do more or Kashmir needs to do more. The truth is that um, uh, the government of India is the deciding factor. It is Mr. Chidambaram who said he wants to have a tight dialogue, quiet dialogue with Huria. It is Mr. Uh, Manmohan Singh who had a dialogue with the separatists, not the chief ministers. And it's uh, New Delhi which is holding a dialogue with Pakistan. So where does the state government? The state government has no role, absolutely no role. It's Delhi's will. They have to show Isn't that the problem, Manish Tiwari? Isn't that the problem that the center comes down so heavy on, this, on a state administration in Kashmir that it doesn't allow a people's leader to emerge? Well, Sagarika, I don't think that's a correct characterization of the situation. You've had a democratically elected government in Jammu but you're not and allowing Kashmir him to across function. four administrations. You're not allowing no, him to I, function. I, 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 complete, I, 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 I completely reject that. But going back to the point that you had made earlier, uh, before slipping into the break about what is that plus and frankly I was trying to rack my brains and go over the last 62 years to find out that what is it that could be done which has already not been tried and I have not really to, uh, been able to come up with an answer so I think the answer really lies that it is a battle of attrition and eventually uh, good governance you know, uh, better accountability, ensuring that collateral damage does not Do get agree done that in the situations Delhi's being completely where you have to control uh, altruistic and therefore, actually allowing, therefore, giving that, Omar his that's head. The way forth, Last comment to you. Is, is Delhi giving Omar his head, giving him the space, or is it coming down too strong and not letting him act? Delhi hasn't done everything Omar would perhaps like them to be doing, but I think he's had considerable room. Okay. He's had considerable leeway. I think we should give him credit for some things he's achieved. He's the chief minister whose police unearthed the Machel killings. Right. He's come down on human rights violations. He's failed in other areas, development, perhaps reaching out uh, to people adequately. But this is what a political system is about. And mm -hmm. if the people of Jammu and Kashmir find that he doesn't step up to their expectations, he will give, give way he to will somewhere else. He will give way to somewhere else. Well, and, and that would have actually then ended uh, perhaps what the media or many uh, parts of India saw as the great hope of Kashmir, which was Omar Abdullah, or which still is Omar Abdullah. Thanks very much indeed. Sajad Lohan, Mehboob Beg, Manish Tiwari, Praveen Swami, thanks very much indeed. Is Umar Abdullah's honeymoon with Kashmir over? Were you telling us? 78, yes. Thanks for watching.